Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. Let's not blow this. Premier Horgan's warning as new COVID restrictions are put in place. Just after they were cleared of COVID cases, a new outbreak in Valley Hospitals, and that included Chilliwack. A vetter daycare shuts down and opens controversy. As well, BC football remaining confident that a season will happen. Our special guests this week include Councillor Bud Mercer on Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City. And our guest anchor today is Robin Jewell, one of the contestants for the 2021 Total Makeover Challenge. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. As COVID cases are climbing again, and this time complicated by the new variants, the PHO, the Provincial Health Officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, toughened up the rules. But not before John Horgan, the Premier, said, we've come so far, let's not blow this. And he was basically pointing to people between the ages of 20 and 39. With temporary rules that are in place until April the 19th, that includes indoor worship services. Those are on hold. Outdoor services remain. This has as we go into the Easter long weekend. Indoor dining is on pause, but takeout, delivery, and patio dining are okay. And with a major outbreak at Whistler Blackcomb this after spring break, that resort has been shut down for three weeks. Public health guidance for schools has also been amended to support and encourage students down to grade four to grade 12 to wear masks while at school. Teachers already have to wear masks. And indoor fitness centers and gyms they're on hold as well, again, until April the 19th. Barely three days after being declared clear of COVID cases, Chilliwack General Hospital was put back on the list. Fraser Health reported four new cases at CGH, along with outbreaks returning to Abbotsford Regional and Mission Memorial Hospital. For CGH, the past outbreak lasted one month. This past week, parents of kids who attend the Chilliwack Child Growth Society's daycare on Vetter Road received a shock. The daycare has been closed for the time being, sending parents to try and make other plans. Letters were sent out to parents as well as posted to the Facebook page. It is hoped, according to the CEO, Amber Bardwell, that personal and family issues can be attended to and that the center would reopen in April. Other uh, online critics noted that paychecks for staff had been missed and uh, that issues with the provincial government bodies had been addressed, or not. There's also no clarity on the Facebook page that there will be a uh, reopening. So on top of all of that drama, and in the face of access to the daycare center, which is restricted on Vetter, there was another problem. The Chilliwack Progress newspaper reporting that the husband of the daycare owner was involved in a January shooting at the Vetter Canal. IIO, which is the police watchdog, is now handling this investigation, and it has come to light that she, the owner, was injured in the takedown of her husband, with more details still to be filtered out. The investigation led to the execution of three search warrants and the dismantling of an alleged fentanyl trafficking operation. Chilliwack RCMP Crime Reduction Unit, the CRU, initiated an investigation in March of 2021 when police received reports concerning the suspected trafficking of fentanyl at an address in the 46,000 block of Yale Road, home of the Chilliwack Union of Drug Users. The CUDU, from their Facebook page, is described as a union offering advocacy, harm reduction, and many other services as a way of combating overdoses. The CUDU has since been shut down for the time being. Other raids happening on Luckacuck. Chill TV asked CUDU organizers for comment. We are still waiting for their response. Chilliwack School Trustee Barry Newfeld is back in the news, this time from a posting to a closed Facebook group called Exposing Soji123. It is a page administered by Carrie Simpson. She's the president of Culture Guard. That organization is anti-Soji as well as anti-LGBTQ. The group endorses Barry Newfeld's anti-Soji stance. Newfeld, who is a publicly elected school trustee, said in that post that parents should pull their kids out of public uh, public schools for fearing they could be indoctrinated into a gay or trans lifestyle. Chill TV has reached out to Newfeld for comment, and we have not heard back. 
In September of 2019, the BC Prosecution Service announced that a special prosecutor approved charges involving allegations of theft of $113,000 from the constituency office of Chilliwack MLA, John Martin. The person charged is Desmond Devnich, who Martin later fired after the charges were laid. Devnich, at the time, continued to work for the Chilliwack Chiefs and has since left that position. Last fall, Devnich pleaded guilty to fraud charges, which were later dropped, but is still up on charges of breach of trust. For the second time in less than a year, the Chilliwack Lions Club have come to the aid of the Chilliwack Alano Club. The Alano is a clean and sober, safe haven and community meeting place. Not only does it serve the recovered community with meetings like AA, Al-Anon, CODA and CA, it is also a safe gathering place for seniors. It does not receive similar funding as, say, Ruth and Naomi's Cyrus Center or Salvation Army, as it is not a shelter, it's not a food bank, nor is it a soup kitchen. But the Alano Club does need help in other ways. In April of 2019, a senior had a medical emergency this off the corner of Nowell and Victoria and drove her car into the back security fence. Since then, ICBC has not cooperated in assisting the club with replacement insurance money. So the window for that help actually closes in May. The Alano also needs a tree cutting service as they have a massive old tree in the front yard that's starting to split and fail. The Alano will also need a new used gas lawnmower, as the one they, they have now is well past its prime. The Old Ann Davis Thrift Store remains with the organization and has morphed into their community outreach center. The grand opening was on Monday and featured dignitaries included Mayor Ken Popoff, Councillor Bud Mercer, RCMP officers, and Ann Davis Executive Director Patty McAhonick. The center will assist those in need with services and counseling and will work with the City of Chilliwack Reaching Home Program, as well as the Canadian Women's Foundation Safer Stronger Program. On April 1st, 2020, the City of Chilliwack officially became a designated community under the federal government's Reaching Home Program, which brings with it over $1.7 million in funding for the next four years to address homelessness in Chilliwack. Some of that money will go towards this new center on Yale and now across from the downtown post office. Chilliwack Animal Safe Haven is doing some fundraising of their own. They need at least $15,000 to repair the roof for the two cat shelters. They don't receive the type of money that the SPCA or the Provincial Wildlife Rescue Centers receive, so they have resorted to a GoFundMe page to help out with that project. Meanwhile, in Abbotsford, Abbotsford police are investigating a cat theft. Uh, about five kittens, all under the age of two weeks, have been stolen taken away from their mom way too early. So needless to say, anybody who is a pet lover or a cat lover is on the lookout for this theft. At the end of every month, Chill TV presents Counselor's Corner, Chilliwack City. This month, Dawn engages Chilliwack City Counselor Bud Mercer in a conversation. Take it away, Dawn. <laughs> Chill TV's News of the Week and another edition of Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City with Councillor Bud Mercer. A lot of things to uh, catch up on, and I know one thing that was near and dear and still is near and dear to your heart, this was the single-use bylaw, and I guess, what, shopping bags and beverage dispensers? What, what exactly does this involve, uh, and uh, how is it going to play out for those of us living in Chilliwack? Well, it's pretty much everything that's bad for the environment. Uh, this is a good start, uh, nowhere near uh, the end of the list. I think we, as a city, Chilliwack still got a long way to go, but I think it's a great start. Um, the plan is to introduce the bylaw in January of 2022, but we're still in the process of the uh, public consultation with both the public and businesses, and that uh, online consultation is still open until the April, April 16th of the month that's just before us. The ban uh, that's contemplated for January 1st involves things like uh, single-use plastic bags, um, uh, plastic cups, foam cups, uh, plastic utensils. I'll just look at my notes quick. Uh, mm. Plastic straws, um, beverage cups, plastic paper, foam. Um, anything that uh, the world doesn't want in any landfill, whether you're in Chilliwack or anywhere in BC, Canada or the world. 
Something else, and I know environmental concerns are, are big on your plate, uh, and people like Chris Gadsden and Dean Work, who have been involved with uh, fishing conservation, are pleased with this as well. And that's fishing line recycling. This is a really cool idea. I think it's a great idea. Like, you know, and, uh, you know to be honest, I never even thought of it. I, I see it on the beaches. I see it uh, when we walk the river occasionally. And what it is is... Um, it's, it's what to do with used fishing line. It's uh, made of monofilament and nylon. It's terrible for the environment. It's terrible uh, for the fish, especially, uh, you know, when, when the rivers are full during uh, the, the, the spawning seasons. It just doesn't belong in our environment. And the recommendation was made that we build boxes along the Fraser River to actually uh, give a place for the, the fisher people to actually place the lines when they're, when they're done with them and not everybody would throw them on, on the beach, but yeah. some of them uh, do end up on the shore and then end up in the water. Um, but it's a place for them. So we've now built and uh, put in place uh, 14 disposal stations along the Fraser River. It's just a, a it was a great idea. It's a great news story, and it's great for our environment. Something that you and I have talked privately about uh, because of your background in law enforcement, and I know this was a, a big issue for you, and that was the sale of bear spray. I thought it was already restricted, for lack of a better term. So what is now the, the bylaw that is, uh, has it now been enforced, imp imposed? Yeah, it is in place, um, but just to be clear, uh, I think what you're referring to is what's called pepper spray. And, and yep. what makes it illegal is the percentage of the active ingredient in the product. So pure pepper spray that you see the police officers uh, carrying as a use of force item uh, is prohibited for the average citizen to carry. But what's being sold in our, uh, what was being sold in, in some of our local stores is what's called bear repellent. So it still has the active ingredient of pepper spray. Um, but to a lesser degree, so it makes it legal to sell. Pepper, the bear spray is intended for people that are uh, frequenting the backcountry as, as an element or a, a piece of protection against the elements, against bears. And what was happening is it was being weaponized uh, on our streets in Chilliwack. The uh, local RCMP uh, and our bylaw people through their public safety committee approached the city and asked for help to deal with the problem. Uh, calls for service f with the police where peppers, where this bear spray was being used as an element of an assault. Uh, robberies was uh, in some months going up 100%. And believe it or not, it could be bought in downtown Chilliwack in local corner stores. We all know where they are and who they are. Um, but they were selling bear spray downtown Chilliwack. So you have to know what it's going to be used for. It was a common sense decision to look for a way to prohibit it from those stores, but allow stores that are actually involved in uh, supporting backcountry recreational opportunities for citizens and visitors. They're able to buy it, um, but the sale of it's restricted. Again, it's a good news story. It's a public safety story. And there are other uh, issues that we will uh, talk about in, in the weeks to come. Again, Councillor Bud Mercer, a big thank you for joining us. And you're watching Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City, on Chill TV's News of the Week. Last weekend, Trinity Western's men's and women's hockey team hosted their first ever Hockey Gives Blood Skills Challenge at the George Preston Arena. It was a closed event, which followed all the health and safety protocols set out by BC's Provincial Health Officer and Via Sport, and featured a total of five different events in both men's and women's, and promoting fundraising for Hockey Gives Blood and Canadian Blood Services. The event raised over $440. The Spartans' fundraising goal is $1,000. The home league of the Valley Huskers, the BC Football Conference, holding their AGM last weekend. League President Tyler McLaren telling Chill TV they didn't have any league rule changes submitted for review this year. The next BCFC board meeting is coming up in a couple of weeks in mid-April. That's when the board of directors will talk more about the schedule, the budget, and what the season will look like with COVID protocol.
Chill TV weather. It is typical for this Easter long weekend. A mix of sun and showers and the high around 12 to 14, depending on, of course, how much sun we get. A big thank you to Robin Jewell, our guest anchor this week, who is one of the finalists for the Total Makeover Challenge. Robin, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do and what are you up to now? Well, thank you, Don. It's very nice to be here. I'm so excited to uh, have the opportunity to sit with you. I am a full-time mom. I have two beautiful children. I have a 16-year-old and a 22-year-old. I do also work full-time at uh, Save On Foods. I'm your local grocery store clerk of 25 years. Very proud of that fact. And I've also been doing the Total Makeover Challenge for the last, oh goodness, I believe we've been in this now for about eight weeks, nine weeks running now, and it's super amazing. I just love everything I've learned and all the wonderful people I've had the chance to meet. Wonderful chance to meet uh, Trish and Jenny of Chill and Chat. I know they're your, one of your counterpart shows, mm -hmm. and they're fantastic ladies. Everybody out there, um, we start our community recognition round next week. I'm so excited about that as well. That's where you guys get to go on and read our stories. I have fellow competitors and challengers in this competition as well. I do recommend you go on to the TotalMakeoverChallenge.com. Check out all the stories of all the competitors. We're all wonderful, amazing, fierce women going through this together and changing. And I hope to see you guys out there for community recognition. And uh, the name is Robin Jewell for if you want to vote. Robin, again, big thanks for showing up. Uh, Thank you help, help so much. Up. You're welcome. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. Have a fantastic Easter long weekend. I'm Don Lane.